Hello everyone and welcome back. In the previous session, we observed the implementation of restoring division. In this session, we are going to improve the hardware of restoring division. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today, at first we will observe the improved restoring division hardware. Thereafter, we will derive the restoring division algorithm. Now, let's quickly observe the restoring division hardware that we have observed in the previous session to jog up our memories. And thereafter, we will observe how we can improve the hardware. So, we are choosing a dividend that is 111, which is 7 in decimal. And we are choosing our divisor as 11, which is 3 in decimal. Let's now perform the division using pen and paper method. So, if we divide 111 by 11, observe we will first consider the first bit of the dividend. So, 1 cannot be divided by 2 bits, that is 1, 1. And that's the reason why we will have 0 in the quotient now. Now, with this 0, we get to select these two bits. Observe, this is 1, 1 and this is 1, 1, 2. So, yes, we can perform the subtraction now. So, now we will keep 1 in here using which we are actually specifying that we can subtract 1 1 from these two bits. Now, subtracting 1 1 from 1 1 will result in nothing. However, we are entitled to use this bit. So, let's bring it down. Now, observe this is 1 bit and we can't really divide this 1 bit using 2 bits and that will be the reason why we will place 0 in the quotient. So, yes, if we divide 7 using 3, we are bound to get 1 as the remainder and 2 that is 0, 1, 0 as quotient. Let's now perform this division using our old hardware. Now in DR register, we are going to place the dividend first and that too in the least significant bit places. Now coming to the V register, that is the place where we keep the divisor. Here in the most significant 3 bits, we are going to place the divisor. Now, as we have already observed in the previous session that the least significant bit places of the V register, the most significant bit places of the D or R register and the Q register's elements will be initialized with zeros, isn't it? Now, look at the contents of the V and the DR register. It is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1 and 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Now, during the first iteration, we are going to shift right the contents of the V register. Observe. This is still larger than the content of the DR register. So clearly, if we perform the subtraction between these two, since magnitude wise this is smaller than this one, the result is going to be a negative. And with that, we are going to restore the content of the DR register. And due to this, in Q, we are going to left shift a zero, correct? Now, during the second iteration, we get to shift the content of the V register one more time to the right. Now observe, this is 111 and this is 110. So yes, we can perform the subtraction now. Now subtracting 110 from 111, we get the result as all zeros followed by a 1 at the LSB. Basically, we are performing 7 minus 6, which is supposed to give us 1. And since the result of this is positive, through left shift, by the end of the second iteration, we will push 1 in the content of the Q register. Now, during the third and the last iteration, we get to shift all the contents of the V register towards the right one more time. And as you can see, now the content of the DR register is 1, whereas the content of the V register is actually 3. So again, if we perform the subtraction between these two, the outcome will result in negative. And that will be the reason why by the end of the third iteration, we will push another zero through left shift in the contents of the Q register. Observe. This is the quotient that we are talking about and this is supposed to be the remainder. Now, if you observe carefully, in this organization, we are performing two different kinds of shifts. Moreover, the register that we are using so far are of different sizes. If we consider the different size to be N, in that case, the size of the DR register and the V register we are using as 2N, isn't it? So, instead what we have been doing so far we can actually improve our hardware configuration so that we can achieve an efficient algorithm. Now, carefully notice the process that we have been following. Basically, like the pen and paper method, we also have been shifting the divisor towards the right in this entire process. 
How about instead of shifting the divisor towards the right, we shift the dividend towards the left? Now, why would we want to do that? The reason behind that is in order to derive the quotient, we are performing left shift. And to be really honest, these three bits are never really used efficiently. Now, let me explain the process for a better illustration. So, this time, instead of having the registers of different size, we will have three registers of the same n size, where n is the size of the number of bits in the dividend. Now, just like we performed multiplication using Booth's algorithm, here also we are going to use similar kind of strategy. So, we are going to have m register where we are going to store the divisor, which will also be of the same size of the dividend. Then we will have the accumulator and the Q register, where in the Q register we are going to place the dividend and accumulator will be initialized with zeros. Now we will have another register count which will be initialized with the size of the dividend. Now remember, in this particular method, we are going to shift the dividend, not the divisor. To be really honest, we are going to shift the entire content of this accumulator and the Q register pair. So let's begin with the first iteration. Now we are going to perform the left shift of AQ, that is this register pair. And as you can observe, we are only using left shift. In this modified algorithm, we are not going to do right shifts anymore. So if we left shift the entire content of the accumulator register and the Q register, this will look something like this. As you can see, this one of the Q register is coming as the LSB of the accumulator. And the contents of the register Q will also look like this. Now we are not quite sure about the LSB of the Q register, that is Q0 in here. And to determine this, we need to subtract the content of the M register from the accumulator to check whether that is negative or positive. So let's perform that. Now as you can observe, the content of the accumulator is 001, which is 1, and the content of the M register is 011, which is 3. Now if we perform the subtraction between this one and this one, the result is bound to be negative. And since it is negative, we are going to restore the contents of the accumulator register, whereas in the content of the Q, we will set Q0 to 0. Now, why is so? Because the result was negative. So, let's do that. So, we are restoring it to 0, 0, 001. And as you can see, we have reset Q0 to 0. Now, with this, the count becomes 2. Let's move on to the next iteration. Now, we are again going to perform left shift on AQ. So, the outcome will look like this. And thereafter, we will perform A equals A minus M. That is, we will perform the subtraction first and we will set that to A. Now observe, the content of the accumulator is 0, 011, 1, which is 3, and the content of the M register is also 0, 011. 1. So if we now perform the subtraction, the result is going to be positive. Now you might argue that the subtraction between 3 and 3 is going to be 0. But if you remember, since we are using 2's complement subtraction, in that case, 0 is also considered as a positive value. Because if you notice the pattern for 0, it will be all zeros. And we already know, if the most significant bit for any register is going to be 0, that will indicate positive value with respect to 2's complement representations. Keeping that in mind, we are claiming that this is going to be positive. And since it is positive, so we are going to update the content of the accumulator. Basically, we are not restoring it anymore. And alongside this, we are going to set Q0 as 1. So after updation, the contents of the accumulator register is going to be 0, 0, 0, and the quotient Q is going to have 1 in Q0. Observe, when the result is negative, we are restoring. And when it is positive, we are updating. Anyway, with this entire operation, the count also becomes 1. Basically, with every iteration, we are decreasing the size of count. Now let's move on to the last iteration, that is the third iteration. Now just like the previous ones, we are again going to left shift the entire content of accumulator and Q register. So it will look like this. Now let's perform A equals A minus M. Now observe carefully. The contents of the M register is 0, 1, 1, whereas the content of the accumulator register is 0, 0, 1. So basically, this is smaller than this one. So if we perform the subtraction, the result is going to be negative. And we already know what should we perform when the result is negative. We are going to restore the content of the accumulator register and we are going to set Q0 as 0. So let's do that. Here we are restoring it back to the previous contents and we are again setting the Q0 as 0. 
and with this the count becomes zero. Observe, we obtained our quotient that was 0, 1, 0 as you can see. We also obtained our remainder as the content of the accumulator register by the end of the entire procedure. I hope you understood the entire procedure. Here, instead of shifting the M register's content towards the right, what we had been doing in here, this time we shifted left the contents of the accumulator register and the Q register. Basically, we are taking this particular configuration and we are performing left shift of this entire content instead of performing right shift of this. And when we are performing left shift on this, we are updating the MSBs in the similar way which we use to achieve the quotient, which if you notice, significantly improved our hardware configuration. Now we only require three registers of n bits and another register where we will keep the count. So let's now derive the algorithm. So we will start and after we have started, we will first initialize the accumulator with zeros. The M will store the divisor and Q will store the dividend like we did in here. Thereafter, we will set count to N, which happens to be the size of the dividend. Now, once these are initialized, thereafter, we will do this, that is left shift of AQ, and we will try to update our accumulator. Now, once this is done, we will check whether the value of accumulator is greater than zero or not. That means whether the content of the accumulator is negative or positive. Now, if the content of the accumulator is negative, in that case, we are going to set Q0 to 0 and at the same time, we will restore the content of the accumulator by performing the addition between the accumulator's content and the register M. So, this is basically the restoring procedure. However, if the result of the accumulator is still positive, in that case, we are going to set Q0 as 1 like we did in here. Anyway, after we perform either of it, we are going to decrease the count's value and thereafter we will check whether the count is zero or not. Because if it is not, we will keep on doing this particular operation again and again until the count becomes zero. And when it is zero, we know we need to stop. And by the end of it, the quotient will be available in the Q register and at the same time, the accumulator will hold the remainder. So this is the algorithm of the restoring division using the improved hardware. So, in this session, we first observe the improved restoring division hardware. Thereafter, we learn the derivation of restoring division algorithm. Alright people, that will be all for this session. I hope the concept of restoring division is now clear to you. In the next session, we are going to observe the non-restoring division. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.